Ruby people, welcome to the channel. I'm the self-proclaimed blue dragon. This is the weekly Wednesday video and we're going to talk a little bit about some of the Irish inspirations found in my free, not safe for work webcomic, Dark Horse. If you're an adult, make yourself cozy as I celebrate a little bit of my Irish American ancestry this week. If there are ads in this video and you don't want to watch them, I highly recommend finding yourself a free, reliable ad blocker. In the background, I'm inking the speech Shimiko gives at the end of Ceremony over on Comic Fury. I hand sketched and lettered that, and that's what's going on in the background. So today is St. Patrick's Day, which here in the U.S. tends to signify a lot of wearing of the color green. It does still have some religious observations tied into it, which was its original purpose. But you'll oftentimes see a lot of Kiss Me on My Irish shirts, parades, and of course, a lot of drinking, which we tend to do with any and all celebrations, not just here, but everywhere. I think America kind of goes all out with, with shit like that, but you know, probably everywhere. I can't, I can't speak to that. So in this video, I'm going to do a few things. I want to first just explain what the fuck, what St. Patrick's Day is, where it came from, what its origins are. Then I want to explain why it's celebrated here. And also some theories I have on why, you know, Irish Pride is such a big deal. Their theories is not necessarily fact, but I'm going to talk a bit about that. And then I'm going to talk about uh, my different nods to the Irish in Dark Horse. I figure most Americans watching this video probably already know what St. Patrick's Day is, but I understand that some people, you know, their lives don't revolve around the holidays that I celebrate. So I want to give a recap of that also for anyone who's international watching this video. St. Patrick's Day originated as an Irish Catholic slash Christian holiday. You know, we call it St. Patrick's Day in Gaelic, not to be confused with the Scottish Gaelic. They're related, but they are different. They actually call it La La Padrigue. <laughs> it's your turn for me to mispronounce your language, Gaelic. Hey, I mispronounce everyone's language. But um, it's essentially the Feast of St. Patrick. It's said to be celebrated on the day that St. Patrick died, and it is celebratory of the birth of Christianity in Ireland, even though St. Patrick himself was probably not Irish. Ireland has a really beautiful history, and if you like literature and you like to study old languages, I highly suggest reading the Tan Vokuli. If it's something that you're interested in, I highly recommend it. It's kind of interesting. But anyway, that's a brief overview. If you want to learn more, check out the Wikipedia page or look up some actual histories on it. I'm, I'm obviously not an historian, so go do a Google search and find some professionals. So in the US, we've had a lot of Irish immigrants coming to this country during various time periods. I mean, St. Patrick's Day has even been celebrated as far back as, like, the colonies before the United States was even formed. But we've had a lot of Irish immigrants coming to the nation during various time periods. While a lot of them were coming here to the U.S. to escape persecution from British rule, Unfortunately, they kind of ran into a similar but maybe different type of persecution even here within the United States. As far as I can tell from what I've looked up, it seems to stem here in the U.S. from a backlash against Catholicism. As far as I could tell, a lot of the publications, particularly from like the mid 18 hundreds, all the stereotypes and persecution of the Irish kind of boil down to Protestants not wanting the propagation of Catholicism in the U.S. Obviously, there's more embroiled in that than just Catholics versus Protestants, but th that seems to be something that keeps popping up in all the things that I looked up. But, as with anything, you know, obviously St. Patrick's Day was already a very important holiday to some of these immigrants, but of course here in the U.S., for Irish Americans who are not from the motherland, it's something that kind of became part of our culture. Irish pride, essentially. And I feel a lot of this probably, now this is where we're getting into my theory territory, but 
anytime you've got a group that is being persecuted by society at large, one of the things that said group tends to do is to take pride in who they are and celebrate that pride, not have it quashed from them, in other words. So I feel like Irish pride now is kind of like the remnants of the days of when the Irish were persecuted in addition to, you know, just celebrating St. Patrick's Day for religious purposes. I feel like now it's just kind of become something that we do to be proud of our lineage. Now, I can't really speak on behalf of other Americans with Irish in their background, but something that I have noticed, you know, around the internet is that a lot of times international visitors don't really understand why Americans run around saying, I'm proud I'm Irish, or in other cases, you know, we, we celebrate things like Oktoberfest, not, not me, but like, um, People with German-American heritage will oftentimes celebrate that. I mean, not that I don't celebrate it for my friends, but you know what I mean. But a lot of that is, I mean, at least for me, I grew up in a family where my mom, more so than my dad, but my mom really wanted us to be interested both in our own culture as well as other cultures. And part of that was, you know, looking up and, and celebrating different festivities from places that our ancestors came from. Because for a lot of Americans who aren't obviously, you know, Native Americans, or I should say indigenous people, since we were, you know, I was born here in the US, but it's kind of a way to harken back to where we came from, if that makes sense. We always celebrated St. Patrick's Day, you know, in like, not, not, not like in the religious sense because my family wasn't Catholic, but we did the wearing of the green and stuff of that nature. More importantly, <laughs> my cousin, ever since she was nine, she started learning how to play the bagpipes. She started with the ch chanter, then she moved on to actually playing the pipes themselves. Springfield, Illinois, where I'm from, isn't a very big town. It was like maybe 100,000 people, which is not big in my opinion. But the Irish and the Scottish heritage groups tended to kind of meld together just because, you know, they're, they're from the same area of the world. And as I mentioned earlier in the video, they do have some relations like with language like Scottish Gaelic and Irish Gaelic. So... In addition to playing, you know, the Scottish bagpipes, I was always kind of in the peripheral. Um, Word of Wednesday, peripheral, because she and I hung out a lot. I hung out with both of my cousins a lot. But she and I would go to various Kayleys. We would go to the Highland Games in Springfield. We, she would play up a, in Chicago at the Highland Games. There's a lot of Irish-American history up there in Chicago. And we would go to the state fair. She would do like cultural event things in the small town that we actually were raised in. This was kind of part of my childhood because we did always hang out. And Mom let me go to like all these events with her. I could get a free ticket. <laughs> you know? And we were best buds anyhow. So growing up in that environment, I kind of romanticized Ireland much like a, a lot of the other people there did. Right next to the people bagpiping, you'd have the, the Irish dancers who were still holding their arms down at their sides, which was a sign of protest against the British. But the same dancers also did something like the Scottish sword dance. It was just kind of a, a mix of all that. But it was something that I always really enjoyed. It was always like a big party, especially if we were going to like a Kaylee. People would be playing the pipes. My cousin played pipes at her own wedding. It was it was just fucking awesome. It was so cool. And then like all the dancers lined up and shit, you know. And it was something that became part of my childhood. So I'm sure there's a little bit of nostalgia here that I'm that I'm hearkening back to. But this coupled with my mom always trying to get us to read up on fairy tales and myths from different cultures, really, it's one of the reasons why I'm so interested in things like the Irish fey folk or the Scottish fey folk or different fey and mythological creatures from other parts of the world. So my mom, being a dirty freak, of course had a copy of Brian Froud and Alan Lee's fairies 
which I used to love because, you know, all the fairies are nude in there. <laughs> this is why I like naked people. <laughs> <laughs> but 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 le legitimately it was one of my favorite art books to this day it's one of my favorite books it wasn't just sketches and watercolors and paintings of these mythological creatures in the text there were descriptions talking about the origins of these and it, it, it was interesting because the book treated them as though they were real obviously it's a bit not, not so much tongue-in-cheek but obviously it's supposed to be fantastical but they would have descriptions of where you would find the Jenny Green Teeth and where this and that would be. There were Marrows and Selkies, Puka, the Puka, Changelings, which if you want to know more about the Changeling influence, check out my video on Kanma. And within that book was also stories. I don't know if it has the story of the White Bull, Queen Maeve. Whether or not it had that story, you know, with Kukulin and, and all that, I know for sure it had the story of the hunter Oshin and the fairy Neve, which I've been pronouncing wrong and just discovered that it was Neve and not Neem. I always say Neem, <laughs> probably because of the secret of Nim, but anyway, or, or maybe because there's an M and not a B in there. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, so these were stories that really influenced me. There was even a version of this story of Oshin and Neve, which was turned into a, an animation, which y'all know I love cartoons and animation. I'm gonna put an iCard up in the upper right hand corner of the cartoon that I watched. Oh my god, it's so... It's from the 80s, but it's actually really well illustrated for the time. If you like nostalgic cartoons, check it out. These are stories and things that throughout my childhood I've always written fantasy stories. I think I've only strayed from that genre one or two times in my life. So if you couldn't tell, the book Fairies had a really, really big impact on me and, of course, Dark Horse. The Seely Court and the Unseely Court, all of that is tying back to these mythological beings that are from Ireland and other parts of, you know, that, that area. I was I almost said Great Britain, but Ireland is its own country. Um, Northern Ireland is part of Great Britain. Wales, oh my gosh, Wales has a really rich... Wales is so cool too, and I'm sick of people shitting on Wales, even as a joke. People are constantly shitting on Wales. Leave them alone! I love Wales. <laughs> but all of that is so, so cool to me, so... My nod to the Irish would, of course, be O'Sheen. And when I made him, you know, a lot of times we have this stereotype that the Irish, they all have red hair and they all have freckles. But, you know, in our family, we were always talking about how, like, we were the black Irish, you know, the black haired Irish. I mean, I have brown hair. But that, that was kind of like, we always just kind of laughed at how everyone had this stupid stereotype and we're like well most of the Irish to our understanding I mean you look at people like uh, Bernard from Black Books and all these other fucking people who are Irish and ain't none of them are fucking red haired Liam Neeson doesn't have red hair I mean there's a lot of famous people who are Irish who do not have red hair <laughs> and freckles so we always kind of chuckled at that and that's why I deliberately made Oshin have black hair. Black hair, not red hair. No offense to anyone out there with red hair. I love red hair. I have several characters who have red hair and I'm realizing most of them are bad guys, which I need to amend that. That was not intentional. I don't know what that says about me. It says more about me than people with red hair. But um, yeah, that, that was probably one of my main nods to that. I'm gonna do a video on Oshin eventually. I was gonna do that this year, but life got in the way. So I'm just gonna talk a bit about him. But one of his favorite musicians is, of course, Thin Lizzy. And for those of you who don't know, their lead singer, Phil Lennett. He was actually an Irish musician. A really, really fucking fantastic guitarist. I, I love Thin Lizzy. Um, also, if you can't tell, a lot of my characters have, <laughs> have my very same taste. <laughs> Which I probably need to work on that a little bit, but... Yeah, these are some of the things that I kind of wanted to sneak in as my tip of the hat to the Irish. 
nothing like overt because I don't want to completely misrepresent anyone. The thing about Oshin is he speaks with a Scottish accent because although he was born in Ireland, he was raised in Scotland and I did that deliberately to pay homage to my own Scottish-Irish background. Scottish-Irish-English, I guess there's some German somewhere on my dad's side and Filipino. This is such an in-depth topic and I really have to wrap up so join me next week for part two of discussing my Irish influence with Dark Horse. Question of the week, what is your favorite Irish music band? And if you think you don't know any, you might be surprised. Maybe you don't know any. Go look some up, listen to them, and tell me who your favorite one is. God, I'm getting real fucking goofy and bossy. Sorry, y'all. Do it if you want, or don't do it. <laughs> do what you want to do. <laughs> anyway, thanks for listening. If you want to support the channel, you can sub, like, do the bell thing, or you can also support me monetarily through Patreon, Subscribestar, Ko-fi, any of those donation links, all down in the description. Highly appreciated. You guys rock, you keep me going, and I'll be back next week with another video. Peace and love. Fare you well. Keep on trucking. And it's celebratory. It's celebratory. It's celibate. And it's celebratory. Why is that word so hard? Play pipes it. Well, I shouldn't say it. Whales, I would love to learn. Oops, I didn't really know that. Also known as La Falad. La Falad. Also known as La La. <laughs> La Sonori. Okay, I'm gonna try it one more. I'm gonna. D this is. La. Yeah, he's just saying La La Padrig. Okay, I'm just saying La La. Fuck it. That's close enough.